Welcome to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for joining us. Well, in Northern Nevada's growing economy, a lot of people are feeling like now is a good time to start a new business. But it's not an easy undertaking. Depending on which study you look at, between half and 90% of new businesses fail within the first few years. But getting connected to the right resources can help. Ann Silver, CEO of the Reno Sparks Chamber, is here now to talk about all that. And thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so for anyone who's not familiar with the Chamber, can you kind of explain what it is? Well, sure. I think there are very few people that haven't heard of a Chamber of Commerce. They exist in small towns, large communities, big cities. And we're about to have our 100th anniversary in 2019. So the Reno Sparks Chamber um, merged uh, Reno and Sparks several years ago, and we've existed and done quite well representing businesses in our community. So it's a, it's a group of business owners? Well, it's a nonprofit organization, a 501c6, and we exist to promote business, to ensure the vitality of our economy, to assist businesses, to advocate on their behalf, and to make sure that as businesses come to this community or wish to maintain their successful businesses, that we're there to provide any kind of information they may need. Now, are you guys getting a lot busier with all the new businesses that are coming in? Oh, yeah. I think uh, we all know that we've, we're have we emerging from the recession. And certainly, Reno is uh, re the Reno Sparks area is certainly on everyone's radar for a great place to, to own and operate a business. And that includes not only the big Teslas and Panasonics, but small startups that are saying it's a great economy, wonderful community, great place to raise a family. And they're coming to this community as well. Is it generally a pretty good climate to start and run a business in the Truckee Meadows right now? Well, I, I would, th I haven't done it myself, but I can say that most people are finding it to be fun and they're successful. And this community is demanding more businesses as the population increases, as consumers have more disposable income. I think it's much better to start a business now than it might have been a few years ago. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what kind of businesses are your members here locally? Well, we have over 1,600, and we're talking about maybe a startup that has one person all the way up to companies with 500, 700 employees. So we represent small, medium, and large companies and welcome everyone. We welcome people working from their home. We welcome consultants. We welcome nonprofits for-profits, anybody who is interested in serving this community and has a budget. And, you know, in that way, too, they can help advocate for um, business-friendly policies and things like that in a way that um, might be a little bit more impactful than doing it individually? Well, I, I would say we speak with one voice, and we're consistently on the ground every legislative session. We have a full-time head of government affairs. So one of the three pillars of what we do and what we stand on is advocacy, always advocating pro-business, less government regulation, certainly more opportunity to thrive as a business person um, to the extent that starting a business can be tough or even maintaining a business and putting your own money on the line. We want to make sure that the free marketplace is really what's driving uh, a business and not necessarily rules and regulations. We have many, but we don't need more. Do you think that uh, we are worse in that respect in terms of Northern Nevada than other places, or do you think we're about on par in terms of rules and regulations for businesses? I don't think we're worse. I, I think we have to look in the context of this state and being battle-born and a little more independent-minded and not necessarily um, wanting to be a big metropolis area, we want businesses to thrive. We want them to have that independent spirit. And we have a legislature that only meets every two years. So the less heavy we can encumber uh, businesses with regulations and things that perhaps look good to people but may harm a business's chance of success, we're going to do rational study and reasoned debate and then take a position. Now, when it comes to this particular legislative session, are you guys taking any strong positions on any of the bills going through? Definitely. We've come out, as have many organizations, op opposing the minimum wage. Uh, we a raise in that, even over a period of years. We feel that that's an, a mandate that businesses shouldn't face. My understanding is that, is that less than 5% of workers in Nevada earn minimum wage, so we're talking about 
a very small group of people that might result in a very, very large impact to businesses. And we understand that businesses might have to reduce their staff, might have to cut hours. And if I were starting a business and someone told me that I have to pay more, I would definitely be looking at my bottom line and ways to save money. And then that impacts individuals. So the, the consequences are what we look at before we take a position. And we know definitively from research that a mandated minimum wage would affect particularly small businesses. What about the argument that if people make more, they can spend more, they consume more, so then companies have more customers? Well, I, I could say that. We'd all like to make much more. And of course, I don't think the Chamber would ever take a position that we don't want to see people make a living wage. It's important that people be able to be self-sufficient and raise their families and afford housing, if not buying a house, renting an apartment. But we don't necessarily think that a mandatory raise to the minimum wage is the way to do it. We think a free marketplace and external competition, all boats rise. There are very few employers in an employee-driven marketplace like we have right now that can get away with just paying minimum wage. Okay, anything else you're following in the legislature? We're following everything that has an impact on business. Certainly, we're, we're looking at the non-compete bill that may restrict people from moving from company to company and we're we're taking a very reasoned uh, I think approach to that we want to see what the language looks like we're opposed to a mandated sick leave provision and it's not because people don't get sick and lose pay but I think the language is it's in itself uh, somewhat concerning there are some things that are not well defined and I don't think our positions are harsh they are based on what we see in writing, and it doesn't mean we're not open to compromise, or at least raising our voice of concern and then understanding that, that compromise is, is what may happen in a political body. Do you feel that the chamber is being heard at the legislative level? Without a doubt. Uh, I know that by virtue of having Trey Abney as our full-time govern government affairs director and being present at the legislative session, maintaining those relationships all the time at the city, county, state, and federal level. Uh, the chamber has a very powerful voice. It's one of the reasons I think people should belong to a chamber. Okay, now you're relatively new to the position of CEO, yes. and when we spoke on the phone about this, you said you're hoping to make some changes to the organization, mm -hmm. so tell me about those. Well, I've inherited a great legacy. I, have, um, I was on the board previously. I think uh, a great deal can be done by a chamber. I think with anything, you look to doing a, a bit of refreshing, and one of the things I'm very focused on is member value. Uh, I don't think it's about suddenly increasing the number of, of members. I think it's about providing value so that it's just a natural that you join the chamber. We want to focus on educational and informational forums and sessions for our, our members. We want them to be free. We want to focus on networking, which is a great value when you are a business that you know other businesses and you can learn from them. And then we want to use our members as experts in various fields, be it legal or IT or marketing technology, we know that they have much to offer to their colleagues. So we want to do much more in terms of connecting business to business. What's the fee like to join? Uh, I want to say it's reasonable, but it can be steep to someone who may have just opened a business. So we try to work with startups who may need a payment plan. I'm looking to offer the many, many 501c3 nonprofits in the community a lower rate not necessarily approved by my board yet, but it's certainly something I'm advocating because nonprofits are business. It's not just a tax status. They have to stay in the black as well. Is, so, it a, is there a minimum? Like, is there an entry level what everyone has to pay? Yeah, if you're an individual and you're joining as an individual, it's $100. It can start at 335 But I think there are always people who are going to say it's a reasonable amount of money and others who, who won't. My job is to find that middle ground so that we make it affordable um, for any business that wants to be part of the chamber. Okay, what would you say that our region needs um, more than anything else in order to be business friendly, to help businesses succeed? Well, I think right now uh, the term on everybody's lips is workforce. I mean, we need people. And whether it's a small business who's looking to hire someone to take food orders uh, uh, over the phone or it's a restaurant looking for a, a good server or it's someone looking for an accountant or it's someone looking for an HR assistant. We know that there are jobs for everyone here and we know that we need people who are ready and willing to work. 
Many jobs don't require a college education. Many don't require a two-year degree. We want to find ready-to-work individuals who care about being self-sufficient and involved in, in taking care of themselves and contributing back to the community in terms of their income. So I would say right now it's about finding the people to man all the openings that there are in this community and there are just thousands of available jobs. Yeah, well, it's a good position to be in. Definitely. Absolutely, yes. Okay, we've got about a minute left. Is there anything else you'd like the public to know about you guys? Well, I think chambers face some degree of obsolescence. Uh, with a hundred year history, you do need to focus on member value and what we're doing that's new and different and to constantly stay up with business trends and what's innovative and what's compelling so that we constantly have a strong message to people about why the chamber is valuable. We've developed a new member value proposition and I can't wait to introduce that to the community. Okay, and then for businesses, if they want some more information, where should they go? They go onto the chamber website, they contact the chamber, uh, they can dial 775-636-9550 and get any one of us who will be happy to help talk about membership or our programs, events, and things they can do to be a vital part of this community. Okay, and thank you so much thank for your Thank you time. so much, I sure appreciate, it. appreciate being invited. Well, coming up on Face the State, when a child is removed from an abusive home, their story doesn't always get easier. They face a long series of court hearings, foster homes, and major life changes. After the break, I'll bring you a group working to help them through that process. Stay with us.